I don't disbelieve in fairies. I think I'm one of those people that, I don't say they don't completely don't exist, um, but I've never seen any. So until I've met one, I think it would be, I, I couldn't say I wholly believe, but I quite like the idea. saying, oh, it's not me, it's a fairy's fault. Lend us the camera and, and we'll show you. So they take the photos, it comes back, it's developed. Um, and it becomes a bit of a family joke. It isn't adopted, it's not public news at that point. The family know they exist. And I think to a certain extent, people in the village know about it, but that's it. And it's never really taken as proof of fairies. It's just a bit of a, a family joke. Elsie's mother, Polly, um, is quite a strong um, believer in uh, this thing called theosophy, where they come to the attention of Edward Gardner. He was sort of the leading light in theosophy and is researching the, um, the existence of fairies. At that point in time, Arthur Conan Doyle is writing a, an article for The Strand, which was due to come out Christmas 1920, so 100 years ago. Gardner does more research, they commission um, additional photographs. The first two um, photographs are published December 1920 and that's when it's sort of, well we'd call it going viral now. You know, everybody picks up on it. There's been folklore about the existence of fairies for years and years and years. Ago. There's ballads talk, that talk about it, there's references all over the country, all around the district that, that reference this belief in fairies. So it's not enough to believe, you want proof that these things exist. Um, and that's what the photos were seen as, was proof that they existed. There's also this wish that after the First World War, which was horrific, you know, and everyone had a relative for, that they'd lost, you know, a brother, a, a father, a son. So it's this idea, I think, that if fairies are real and there's proof of that, does that mean that other elements of the supernatural are real? It does get brought up quite a lot. I mean, I'm sitting in a fairy garden. Um, this was created with sculptures that reference the photos. It's planted up. Um, with plants that are traditionally fairy friendly. There are signs there if you if you look for it, and certainly when houses go for sale, the story is always, particularly if they're ones on Main Street, because they can talk about the bank. Fairies as pretty things and nice things, and that's what people are responding to. If you start going back into fairy history, you start realising that, generally speaking, fairies are not friendly, they can be quite malevolent and there's always been an element of respect, but the story that people are responding to here is much more to do with this idea of, I think the fairies is representative of some of the lost rural past. It basically boils down, and I've had this confirmed by Elsie's son, um, they didn't want to embarrass Conan Doyle and Gardner. They were these two eminent, well-respected men who basically pin part of their reputation on it. And then it's more about, is it fate and how did they do it? 
And then, of course, the girls confirmed that, that yes, it was. They couldn't say, actually, no, it's not real at a point that it could really have embarrassed them. So it isn't until Gardner dies, um, because he dies much later, that they felt that they would be safe to talk about it. And then they, I think they just let it lie until people started poking around about it. And then were like, actually. Elsie was always really adamant and she, um, she talks about how she does it. She did it, so she sketched, um, there are some fairies depicted in the Princess Mary gift book, and she basically enlarged them, added wings, cut them out, and they stuck them on hat pins by the back and then photographed them. We can only go on what the two girls have said, which is that Elsie never saw any but Frances is adamant that she did. It's one of those that you just have to choose what you would like to believe. I always remember what Elsie said in a response, in response to an article where she talks about, you don't call people liars for talking about the existence of Santa Claus. You don't call a parent a liar for saying Santa Claus exists. So why would you do that? fairies and she, she talks and she has this wonderfully evocative phrase of the word liar is a very harsh word for a true or an untrue fairy story whether you believe or whether you don't believe it's just such a fascinating story whichever way you go whether it's whether you love the idea of fairies and their existence and you see that it's great because it's proof or you just see it as evidence of an extremely long-running hopes that two young girls were pulled off. It's just such a, a, a great story and I think that's why it's lasted.